Hey everyone, this is Harry from 8186. Um, so if you, you know, need a refresher on the lecture, um, basically today we're going to figure out how to set up MongoDB in Node. And I, writ I wrote up a small um, setup guide in um, on eConestoga. So if you check this out, Introduction to MongoDB, and you'll be able to actually create a Cloud Atlas account and have a free uh, MongoDB database, which is kind of cool. So the first thing we really have to talk about is what is MongoDB and why is it different from something like SQL Server or Postgres or just a SQL Server? So they call this type of database NoSQL. And, and NoSQL databases are basically, they differ from relational databases, so RDBMS like you're used to, um, because they, you know, they don't use SQL now, or they do, but they don't now. It's kind of difficult to explain, but we'll give it a shot. So no SQL stands for not only SQL. It like basically indicating that databases don't solely rely on like SQL, structured query language. And these types of databases, Mongo in particular, um, basically store data in three types. The most common one is JSON which we've looked at a little bit. Another one is called BSON, which is for binary data. And then we can also store XML, which is a little bit uh, used less. And um, basically, we use key value pairs. And I'll explain a little bit more about these in a moment. But we don't necessarily have primary and foreign keys like we do in a traditional database. So we can save the entire chunk of data and not really care um, how it's organized. Now I say that, take that with a grain of salt because we still do kind of care and we want to keep things organized as much as possible. But unlike a SQL database where say you had a person table and you're saving person data where you'd have first name, last name, you know, address, email address. In a NoSQL database, we could actually save all the data that we wanted in relation to the object. So if we had a person object that had included the vehicles that they owned and, um, the houses that they own and their bank account information, that entire object could be saved into NoSQL, into a NoSQL database. A lot of this stuff I'm talking about is easier to show you than to than to describe, but you know, some of the features of NoSQL databases are scalability. Um, basically, if you have a regular SQL server, you store all the data on a single platform. And you can, there are ways to scale this out, but um, in a NoSQL database, you can actually store this on multiple servers, meaning it's well suited for cloud computing and big data kind of applications. It makes it a little bit easier to go, you know, from a thousand users to a hundred million users, at least in a quick fashion, because you can just keep adding a new server to make it uh, work easy. And then you don't have to really upgrade the server that you're, you're currently using for it. Whereas if you were to use a SQL server like MS SQL, you, know, you would have to, you know, upgrade the RAM, add a new hard drive, all of this kind of stuff. No, no SQL. Personally, I don't use it often, except for rapid development. So um, when we're doing prototypes or uh, I really want to iterate a project quickly, I'll use no SQL, but then I typically will convert it to a SQL database. Um, I'm not going to say it's personal preference. I, I'm just not fully experienced with no SQL in a production setting. Um, I never I never needed the advantages that it, it had for that scalability, I guess. But on, in a different perspective, you know, if you've ever been trading stocks like on the NASDAQ, that runs on MS SQL, not NoSQL. So there's scalability on, on SQL servers as well. Anyhow, let's dive into this in, in a code perspective because I think it's a lot easier to see. So first things first, you do need to go read the, the setup documentation because we want to log into something called MongoDB uh, um, Cloud Atlas. And if you go to the MongoDB site in the links, oops, where did my screen go? One second. There we go. So if you go to the, um, the site linked in the setup and then click on try for free. And I just used my email address from school so I already have an account. Uh, I can just sign in. 
and you should be able to log into your account after you sign up. Uh, whatever you do, you, d you should not have to pay for this. They have a free tier, and it's plenty uh, for, for us. So you might get a slightly different screen than this when you log in. I've already have an account, but um, you should see a Create button somewhere. So when you click Create, you should see something like this. And what we want to do is serverless. And I'm sorry, I take that back. What we want is shared because that's the uh, the free tier. So we click on shared. We're going to use Amazon, so AWS. This is EC2. And I'm going to pick um, the US East region. So if you remember from class, um, I think we talked about servers, right? So servers are hosted inside of you know an internet provider, but a cloud server is a huge room of servers that we can RDP into remote desktop or connect to. And these servers here are, are basically Amazon servers and they are in different locations. So Amazon has, I guess, um, a whole server farm in North Virginia. They have one in Oregon and whatever these other ones. They also have them over in Germany, Australia, Hong Kong, whatever. Typically you wanna pick the one that is closest to your location. So we're in the East, even though it says US, you know, we're gonna pick US East and if you scroll down a little bit, we have the, you should have, excuse me, the M0 sandbox. So this is the free tier, you can see. And this is ideal for our needs. Everything else you can kind of leave and just click create cluster. And again, this, I'm doing, um, it will look slightly different on your screen. It, it, I made the tutorial on Econostoga that will, will probably uh, be how it looks for you if you've done it once. This is if I've gone in and deleted the database. So this is kind of uh, how it will look. So again, I've done this before, so I have a, a user, but I'm going to remove myself. And we're going to make a new user. And I'm just going to call it my name, so H Scanlon, And then the password I'm going to auto-generate. And I'm going to copy it. So once you have the username and password, this is not the username and password that you signed up to your account with. This is a totally separate username and password, and it's going to be specifically for our database that we're about to create. So I'm going to, again, just use hscanlin, and then the password, you know, I don't care if you see it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter for me necessarily, because we can delete these kind of immediately. Everything else you can kind of, or these two you can leave um, down here. So what you want to see or what you might see is an, an IP address that they've already added. And this is for security reasons. So only people from your IP address will be able to access your server. Now this is bad because, in I'll rephrase, it's bad for school because sometimes you'll be at home, sometimes you'll be at Tim Hortons or Starbucks or wherever, and the IP address will change. Maybe you're on your, your hotspot or whatever. So a way that we can get around this, and you shouldn't do this in real life or real production, but a way we can get around this for development is if we put in an IP address of 0.0.0, .0 and then slash 0. And we can just say this is all addresses. And if we click Add Entry, this will allow every IP address to connect to this particular database. Huge security risk. Don't do this in real life, but um, it is better for us for... Uh, this demo and and you know if I want to log into your software or whatever then we can do that and my mistake the description can only be one word so I'm gonna I'm just gonna make it any oh I guess oh, I guess it could be anything actually I'm sorry about that um, okay so that's it this finish and close should pop up let's see if I miss something oh I gotta create the user I didn't click create user so there's my user uh, hopefully yeah I have the password so make sure you save that password I actually just drop it into like a file, so I'm gonna do server.js in here and just paste in the password for now and the username. All right, and this is just generated. So again, I don't care if you see this, but um, you may wanna change it to something. I don't know if you ever use this for production. So I'll click finish and close, and then I'm gonna you know, not do the quick start guide, but once this deploys, you should see um, you know, cluster zero in, in this, in this kind of, uh, well, <laughs> this is the, the, the dashboard, jeez. Okay, once you have this going, click connect, and, well, it says current IP address not added, uh, let's just do not show again for now. 
uh, because I did add the zero zero zero, so should shouldn't matter. But we'll tr we'll try it. So check this out. Um, this site is pretty cool because it gives us a bunch of different ways to connect. Well, we want to use the driver's way, and the driver's way it gives us it actually gives us code that we can use um, for depending on whatever language we're working in, which is kind of neat because this doesn't just work in Node. You know, it works in C Sharp. We could actually make a MongoDB in, in our C Sharp console. C++, C even, Java, but we're going to do Node for now because we're going to use Node to also create a website. So you're going to have to follow a couple of instructions. Number one is we're going to have to install um, MongoDB for Node. So if you recall back in our project, when we want to make a new project in Node, we do npm initiate and then, you know, we, we tell our, or at our, um, information and then we we end up getting the package.json and we're going to do npm install mongodb All right so i'm going to do that now before you press enter on this this is going to install mongodb's driver and i don't want to use mongodb driver just because i want to show you that there's another way to do this so i'm not going to use this at all but what i am going to use is i'm going to use this connection string so forget about this npm install, even though you know I showed you it. We still need to do the node uh, npm initiate because we're going to use a different different package. But I really want you to copy this string. So take this string and go back to our server.js, and you can just paste this in here for now. Notice that it doesn't put in the password for security reasons, but now you can take your password from here and paste, paste it into um, our string. The second thing I want you to do, and this you just have to, you have to know, um, for the 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 middleware, it's called middleware that we're going to use for this, is that right here at the end where it says cluster zero, and cluster zero will be whatever your database is called, and then this is the server. Right where this slash and the question mark is, we actually have to put in the name of the database that we created. So in our case. In this case, for this example, it's cluster zero. So if you do not put this, you're going to get a connection error, which I'll show you a little bit later. OK, so instead, we're going to use a third party tool. And the third party tool that I want to use is called Mongoose. So if you go to um, npmjs.org, right, these are, this is our node package manager, and you type in Mongoose, this, you should see Mongoose MongoDB ODM. ODM stands for Object Data Modeling, and I think this is a more robust version of the Mongo driver that they, they supply. So this, again, is a library, just like Express, like we used before, that allows us to access um, like CRUD operations. So if you don't know what CRUD operations are, C-R-U-D, you should check those out, because CRUD stands for Create read, update, delete. Once you have a way to create, read, update, and delete in any platform, you can basically make anything you want, right? Facebook has a create, you create user, create a new post. Um, it has an update when you edit your post. You know, you can delete a post, obviously. Um, so create, read, and then read. Um, you obviously can read the post, right? So this is talking about the functions that the database is going to be using. And we're going to write software that does all four of these, but I'm going to show you an example of at least one right now using Mongoose. So we're going to do npm install Mongoose. And again, if you're going to follow along or look back at the notes on Econosoga, if you look in the week six tab, you'll see Mongoose ODM with MongoDB node exclamation mark. If you click on this, it has these notes as well. So if it's going too fast in the video, you can check it out. Okay, so we're going to npm install mongoose. And you'll see that our package.json gets updated, or will. All right, there's our dependencies mongoose. And we're just going to add it as we would any other um, uh, module. So do const mongoose equals require mongoose. Right, so this is adding the mod module. Then the 
before we can kind of move on, we got to talk a little bit about, you know, how, how do we get, how do we organize this data, I guess. So I mentioned it a little bit ago on a RDBMS, you would make a new table for something like a person, right? And, um, you know, you would keep first name, last name, address, phone number, those types of things in there. And you'd have to specify what types of data those things are, right? So first name would be a string, phone number a string, address a string, maybe, I don't even, what could we use as an int, I guess, um, I don't know, employee number or something, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But we have to specify, you know, what we want it to store in the database. We have to do something similar here, but the good news is that we can do it via code as opposed to going into some database editor. And we can do it really easily because, as I said at the start, these NoSQL databases actually store JSON, right? So if you were to make a person in without saving it or without it doing anything, we could just do let, you know, person equals and then put the attributes in first name, array so on and so forth, right? So this is a literal object in JavaScript. And our primary goal, you know, maybe we do phone, um, whatever, right? So our primary goal is to get this data, use our database connection, and get it over to our cluster zero, which is our the database that we have, right? That's our primary goal. And we're almost there. It's not even that difficult. So. If we rewind a little bit, we talked about MSSQL and how it uses primary keys and foreign keys. Notice I haven't put a key in here. And when we create these tables, we're actually creating something called a schema. So S-C-H-E-M-A. And both MongoDB and MSSQL or SQL and NoSQL use schemas. But the difference is that MSSQL uses a fixed schema, meaning that once I create first name, last name, and phone number, it's difficult to add a new column to this table. If you forgot to do it, um, you know, you'd have to add a new column populated with some kind of default data. In MongoDB, we use a dynamic schema, meaning if I forgot to add address, I can actually add address later, and it doesn't affect the other data because, the, again, the schema is dynamic, meaning it can change on the fly. So this is where it gets a little bit trickier. Um, but let's do this person example on the website. I use a company example, but we're going to do person just because I've been talking about person. So I'm going to instantiate a couple things from the Mongoose um, library or for, uh, module. So I'm going to do let schema equals mongoose dot schema. This effectively, you know, creates a, a schema um, object that we can use. And this schema object has certain things inside of it. So we're going to forget about person just for a minute. Or I'm going to forget about my literal object. But I'm going to make a new schema called person schema. And it looks like this. And this is kind of just like instantiating an object, right? In C sharp, person schema equals new schema. But I'm going to put some things in here. And the things that I'm going to put in here are, you know, what I want to actually put in the schema. So first name. And then I'm going to say I'd like it to be a string. And then last name, and I'd like it to be a string also. And phone, I'd like it to be a string. Now you're probably sitting at your computer screaming because I had finished telling you last week or two weeks ago that you know JavaScript only has three variable types, const, let, and var. The thing is, is that MongoDB is not designed just for JavaScript. Like we're using Node, which is you know effectively JavaScript, but you know, other languages can use it and it has to know, like it has to know what the type is. So there are, there are different types. I think an int is called a number. Um, and there, you know, there's string char, there's also sorts of types for this, but for now, this is the schema and we're just going to use strings for this demo anyway. So this schema is like, I want to say it's like the blueprint of the database or uh, table person, but we don't call them tables. We call them we uh, collections. So we call them collections. So again, this is going to look weird because it's it's starting to repeat, but hopefully it clicks. So this is the blueprint. 
Now I want to take this blueprint and almost use it, but I want to use it in combination with other, and I know this is going to sound weird, other options from our Mongoose um, library. So check this out. Maybe let's, sorry, excuse me. Maybe let's comment this a little bit better. Sorry, I was coughing. Uh, sorry, so define a new schema for person. I'm sorry, this is actually my bad, my mistake. This is retrieving the schema constructor. So remember in C sharp, we had constructors for our models or our classes. This is the same thing, but we're just we're getting this from the mongoose um, module. So we're actually retrieving a constructor so that we can run it here. See, no, notice how that we do let person equals new schema. So this is instantiating the model or the object called person schema. And this because it contains information, right, that we're going to use. Now, I'm going to make a new person again, but I'm going to use capital P because this is like our class. So this is a variable that allows us to use a constructor. This is instantiating a new schema object. This is defining the class that we're going to use. And the way it's kind of weird, right? Because it's like almost an extra step that you're used to. But check this out. I'm going to just write it first and then explain it. Right, so this basically creates a model named person uh, using the person schema, right? And this model, this person model, will interact with the collection called person. So this model will interact. in MongoDB. The cool thing about this part is that when we run this code, if the collection doesn't exist, it automatically creates it for us. Right? So when we run this, it's going to go into, it's going to connect, hopefully, um, or wait, I'm sorry, we haven't done our connection string yet. We'll get there. But eventually, this will connect to our database and then um, create the table effectively. Okay, so it is a little bit of work so far, and we still haven't put in any any data. So how do we do this? So we're going to go back to the top, and like I said, we need to connect to our, our DB. So I kind of left this out, but let's add it in. So after, actually, I'm going to do it after the schema. I'm going to say connect to Mongo db atlas and all we have to do is mongoose.connect and then our connection string so we can actually paste in this entire connection string don't forget those changes we made at the very start right i added the password as well as the uh the name of the db if you skipped ahead in the video you, you will want to go back and and look at that so there's our connection string there's multiple ways to do this if you look on the mongoose uh, module website you can um use a different way if you want to but this is the way that i do it okay so now now we get to add actual data so i'm going to go again through this this i just put up here so i remember it i don't really necessarily need it anymore but i'll leave it here just in case so we add the module retrieve the schema constructor connect to mongo db we instantiate a new object meaning i'm going to create a schema and then i'm going to create a model person but this again this person model is very similar to this schema constructor up here. So this is actually a person constructor and we're going to use it to make a new person like just like we would in C sharp. So if we do let person notice it's underscore now, or under lowercase now equals new person which looks like this right so it's using this constructor because JavaScript allows us to put entire functions into variables this is why we can do constructors into these lets and vars and cons and whatever. So let person equals new person. And now 
we can access because we have the schema, first name, last name, and phone number. So I'm going to just do this inside of this code with this, and I'm going to do first name, Harry, last name, Scanlon, phone, uh, whatever it was. All right, something like that. And then we'll close the bracket and make it nice and neat. Oh yeah, you may notice sometimes in these videos you'll see I have stuff like, you know, tabbed over, new line, all this kind of stuff. In Visual Studio Code, there's a plugin. Um, I think it's called Prettier, or it might be, I don't know, I can't remember. But if you download this, I'll, I'll find it and drop it into um, into Discord for you guys. But I think it's in here somewhere. It might be Prettier. Yeah, Prettier. So you can actually keybind uh, certain keys to format your code for you. So notice how I kind of have these. It's kind of all messed up. Well, on my system, if I press Command and then K, or Command K and then D while holding down Command, it formats all of my code for me, which is like really, really handy, right? So if I had this all the way over here, and I do uh, Command K D, right, it formats it for us, which is why you've seen that happen fast. Anyway, here's my person, um, which is using the person constructor from here. Now, why did we do this? Well, remember, in C sharp. And I relate this to the other class because you guys just took it. Remember we had something called inheritance, right? Well, this constructor, even though that we can, can't see it, uh, we're using the mongoose.model and things that are inside of it. So we're actually creating our own object, but we're using we're going to be using stuff that mongoose has already created for us. And that's part of inheriting from this, this stuff. And that's why we learned about inheritance in the first place. So that means that our person class right so if we do console dot sorry our person object console dot log person dot first name you know i'll get the output harry but we also have tons of other functions because we instantiated from the, the mongoose model so i can actually do person dot save and person dot save will actually take this data and if everything else is correct it's going to save it on our uh, our our cloud database so let's give it a shot Right, let's let's try it. You know, first time's a charm. Let's do it. Uh, make sure you save your server.js, and we just do node server.js. Press enter. Fingers crossed. It looks like it's gonna work. I think it worked. Right, and there's something I missed, but I I assure you this works. So check this out. Let's go back to our database, and if you click on database on the left of the screen here, you'll get this green that says cluster zero connect view muttering and they go browse collections once you're in browse collections you should see people and then you know the first name last name and now we can tell that this works so a couple things are going on here that um, you may have noticed so first thing is first I'm gonna stop our program right because it's still running there's the the um, cursor at the bottom so our, our program's running but I want to show you what happens when there's an error that's my first thing so I'm just gonna change my username and I'm going to run my code, and you're going to see there's a huge error or whatever, but it basically says bad auth authentication failed, right? So typically, if you have something like this, bad auth authentication failed, there is a problem with your connection string. Whether your username's wrong or your password's wrong or the cluster is incorrect or you forgot to put this uh, database uh, collection at the end, you know, you, you likely have a problem there. If you, that's like... The, typically the, the only problem that uh, people have uh, if you copy this code from the, the tutorial that I wrote. But the other problem is when I run this and I do the save, our program is still running. And we're not really running a server or anything yet, but notice that I'm going to refresh my, my collection and I'm going to have, you know, two things, but my program is still running. So we have to solve this because we don't want to control C out of things because in reality what's happening is we're doing a connection to MongoDB in Atlas, and then I save to it, but the connection is still open. So we want to make sure that we close the connection properly by exiting the program after we're done uh, running the query. So I'll show you how to do that. So we can do this using arrow functions, and because of um, 
what we're trying to say, promises and JavaScript cool things that happen, which we don't have time to talk about. We do this thing called then. And then runs after the save runs. So this will only happen after the save runs. So if I do this, then uh, like if we do console.log, say, you know, person was added to the database or you know, to the collection. Right, and then uh, yeah, I think that should be it. Oh, right, and I want to, sorry, I didn't even close the connection. So I'm going to put this in brackets because I'm going to add some more code. And I'm going to say process.exit. And process.exit should close our connection properly. And you know what? I apologize. This is, this just came to my mind. So process.exit will close your application, but it won't close the connection. And this can get dicey because uh, um, it's the same problem as before, but we this will now close our our code when it runs, right? You're going to see it. person was added to the collection and it closes. But um, we just exit and we don't really say, hey, I don't want to talk to the server anymore. So we actually have to add this code. And the code looks like this. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think it's mongoose dot disconnect. Yeah, that's it. And then in mongoose dot disconnect, we can actually add our process dot exit to a then in here. So these are getting nested, right? So this save happens. Then I'm going to disconnect from Mongoose, and then I'm going to exit the process. And we do this because, you know, if I do a save, in fact, check this out. If I do a, an, a save and then an exit, like just forget all of this code for a second, because of the asynchronous nature of JavaScript, this save is going to run, and immediately after this exit is going to run, even though that it doesn't know that save happened. So that's why we have this then. And I put the process.exit inside of the first then, but we still don't know that we're disconnected. So now we're going to do mongoose.disconnect. And then finally, when it gets disconnected, we're going to say, um, just go ahead and exit the program. So these nested ifs can get, or these nested then statements can get kind of tricky. And we can even say console.log, you know, safe exit, something to that effect. So I know save uh, person to collection and disconnect from server, exit the app. You guys should be commenting your code just like this, exactly like this. So whenever you're kind of doing a connection or whatever, just so you know, right? Because again, it gets complicated really quickly. So let's give this a, a bash. Let's see. This should all work. And there it is. Person was out of the collection safe exit should be good cool right so we should actually have we're going to have a few of these in here now pretty sure how much we do notice we get assigned an object id right and they're different there's 14 this is f86 bc um, so these are kind of like our primary keys they're they're not really they're just a unique identifier um, because we still have to have unique identifiers for things right other thing to note, check this out. We have cluster zero, which we know about. We know the data is in here, but notice that our table, or now I'm just going to keep calling it a collection, is called people. But in nowhere in our program do I say people, which is kind of unique and kind of weird. And it threw me for a loop uh, when I first started using MongoDB. But MongoDB will take whatever you call your collection and apply the plural to it. Because when you save stuff in a table, you know, we're not saving one person, we're saving people. And it, and we, I think I spent like an hour or two just trying different things that could be funny. Like I started off with just like say company, right? So in, in, this, in this scenario, I could probably run this code. Let's see if it works. Now, I didn't change, you know, it's still a person technically, but I changed the collection name. So notice I refresh the, the page and I have a new um, collection, but it's not called company. It's called companies because it made the plural. And you can have some fun with this. You know, I was I tried like, what's the plural of mice, right? And I just wanted to see what um, MongoDB would do. I can't remember. It's probably just mice, right? 
Oh, it did mices. So sometimes, I don't know, it screws up. Or like, you know, I don't even, is that the plural of mice? Mices? No, it's not moose. But then you could try other things, you know, what's the plural of goose? Geese. Right? So you can kind of play with that. Um, I just find it funny that MongoDB, yeah, see, it actually changed it to geese. So if you're not seeing your exact uh, table or collection that you were talking about, it may have changed its name. There's a way to stop this from happening. Um, I don't mind it because, you know, technically, if you have a person, it should be called people because it's a list of people instead of a, a person. But yeah, I just wanted to note that. So cool, right? So, so far, this is actually our first CRUD operation. So this is, a, you know, it's called save, but it's actually create. Right? It's because it, you know, it actually creates. Kind of cool. What if we want to read? Let's let's read something. So we have we have a bunch of stuff in there. Let's not do a save right now. Let's do a read, and you can probably imagine that there are um, commands that we can use. And we did instantiate a person, a new person object, but we don't we don't even need this right now because we're not creating. So we actually want to read something, and we want to read something from the person collection, which we have right here. So this is like not just the the constructor, but it's like the connector. So I can use this to do something like this so i can type person and there's a there's tons of com 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 commands in here right we can see them but we'll do find and find is going to bring back an array and not sorry not an array but it will give us json objects that were you know technically right so i'm going to do find and i'm going to say i would like to find first name that is harry it's as simple as this oops like this it's got to be exact so we'll do first name Harry, but we have to actually, you know, before we did dot save to execute this command, we have to execute this command ourselves. So it's at ex e dot or ex ec execute, and then I'm gonna do then, and I'm, I'll explain this in one moment. Oops, like this, and I'm just gonna do a console dot log. So what's happening in here, right, is I'm going to use this model to connect to the person, quote unquote, table, I'm just, collection, I keep meaning to say collection, which Mongo has changed into people, but we don't really care as long as it identifies it. This says person, and I'm going to try to find the person with the first name Harry, and because you know, there's multiple in there, it's going to send back an array, I'm going to execute this command. So I'm going to execute this find command, which is, you know, this is the same line of code, effectively, if I just put them all in different lines. After the command is executed, I'm going to use a function, I'm going to use the built in function. And whatever comes in this variable will be returned from the collection. So in our case, everything from uh, this collection, all of these, th all of these objects from from people will be returned into this people object. And then I'm just going to output it to the console. So let's see if this works. I just formatted it a little bit, but this could all be on one line technically. And we'll do node server.js. And if this works and connects and it does, you can see that we got back our objects, right? So there's one, two, three, four, right? With all of me inside of it, right? It's kind of cool. So if you think about this is also a read operation. And there's many we can find you know just one we can find by the actual object id we can find by any of the attributes lots of different things um, so i've uploaded another file on econostoga just called crud op operations reference and this includes create read update and delete so you can go through those on your own check them out it's kind of cool so the awesome thing about this just before i sign off um is you know, now you have the ability to do create, read, update, and delete all with Mongoose. And if we add something like express, you know, const express equals require express, right? And I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to do all of the code, but if we did this and we created a route, right? We do all the express code, express code goes here. Imagine we created a route app dot get user right and then yeah again this is pseudocode but we could actually connect to mongodb 
find whatever the user that we want to see, find whatever user we want, and then display it on a web page. We're going to do this, not this class. I just want to get you set up in this, but we will do this in assignment number two. Pretty awesome. Anyway, that's it for, for this. Um, if you just watched this video, check out the accompanying video because I want to talk just briefly, 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 less than 10 minutes about the midterm that you guys are going to have. So check out the next video. That's everything. Talk to you soon.